Hey, Super Dads. This is a Busy Dad review of Jay Vincent's uh, program, Golden Era System, and actually the home workout system as well, since I have both of them. Uh, it's an unbiased review. I, I just purchased it as a customer uh, because I became interested in his content and I, and I put it to work. Uh, I'm a personal trainer, certified personal trainer. I have uh, probably 15 years of pretty consistent training in different modalities, including calisthenics uh, based programs or approaches, uh, powerlifting, Olympic lifting, traditional bodybuilding, that kind of stuff. So I'm coming at it from a place of relative expertise here. Uh, I work as a personal trainer and design my own programs and help other people, you know, achieve their goals. So, you know, I do, I do have a lot of experience, I think, coming into this review. Uh, but again, it is unbiased. I just bought the per program and went through it myself. Now, one caveat to that is I didn't have access to a full gym due to the pandemic and to, uh, you know, monetary constraints, economic constraints. So I was doing these workouts at home uh, using a squat rack and dumbbells and barbells, resistance bands and that kind of stuff. But it was pretty easy to translate what is presented in that program into the home gym, at least for me, uh, probably because of that background that I have. Okay, so I'm gonna split this review up into talking about the principles themselves. Then I'll talk about the program upon which, uh, that, that, you know, that, that's based on those principles and then the results, and then finally I'll give a summary, okay? So first, the principles. Uh, a lot of the principles that Jay Vincent talks about, things like um, single set, training a single set to failure, okay? Using a slow and smooth rep cadence, uh, training less frequently and really prioritizing recovery, uh, these sorts of things were, I won't say new to me, I was familiar with the high intensity training style, but I never really tried it for whatever reason. Uh, I always thought that I would need a lot more stimulus than that. I would need more volume than that, volume than that. Though my definition of volume has evolved uh, uh, largely due to his, his influence. But let's start with single set to failure. I find that this works uh, really well. So the first time that I tried it, the first workout that I did like this single set, pushing it to momentary muscular failure, and then even pushing beyond that, uh, fighting against the weight almost isometrically at the end there, right? Uh, I got really sore uh, as a result, and I just felt, it felt very different than exercises that I had done uh, the way that I had trained previously. Uh, the slow rep cadence seems to really work as well. Uh, improves your form. You know, it, it keeps you from jerking, from causing injury, from, you know, using excess momentum, all, all these, the peak, peak, you know, prevents peak forces, these sorts of things. And so that also has been a great addition to my training or a great uh, way that, I, that, that, that the, the program has helped my training to evolve. And then training less frequently, this has also been a really big boon for me. Um, so overall now, whereas I, you know, in the past, actually the program that I did before this one was I think a Jeff Nippard power building program. And I was in the gym like five days a week for an hour, an hour and 10 minutes, something like that. Uh, and prior to that, I did, you know, mind pump maps programs, uh, a whole lot of them, the strongman program, maps, aesthetic, all of these programs. And, um, you know, for the strongman program, it was like five, five days a week. And it was, you know, probably a total of three, maybe six days a week, uh, three is probably about five, five hours again, something like that. And. Maps aesthetic, you're basically working out every day, though a lot of those are like focus sessions or trigger sessions, sh shorter, shorter, shorter ish sessions. But then the main workouts take an hour and 10 minutes, especially if you're working out in a home gym where you have to change the dumbbells and stuff like that. Uh, and so that was a tremendous amount of time to be investing in working out, but I felt like that was the only way to make progress at the time. And uh, now, <laughs> looking back on it, now that I've sort of switched up my training uh, to incorporate the principles that Jay, Jay talks about, I look back on that and like I feel like I wasted a whole lot of time. Uh, I feel like my, honestly, it seems narcissistic to me to have done that, to spend that much time on something like that, right? Like all of that time I could have been doing stuff 
for my kids, with my kids, with my family. I could have been working on my career. You know, I could have been uh, doing all sorts of, you know, I could have been doing stuff that I, I, I enjoy exercise. I really do. I love it. Uh, but also like, I want to have a diverse range of things that I do with my life and spending six hours, five hours a week exercising when it's not, when that's not necessary. Right. Uh, that, that time adds up quickly. Uh, and so in terms of the principles, I give it an A and A plus. Uh, I think these principles are really sound and that I think it pretty much, I can't imagine a person that they wouldn't work for. Now, if you're training for some sort of athletic event, uh, if you're training for a powerlifting meet, if you're training for, you know, <laughs> to run a marathon or something like that, right? These, you know, you're going to need specific sport specific activity specific training certainly but in terms of overall uh, general strength building muscle building uh, improving your aesthetics um, just overall health things like that i think these principles are really uh, first class and so i don't think i will ever go back to training the way i used to even just thinking about doing like you know four sets of shoulder presses or something now uh, where the first three sets, I'm just going to whatever, you know, a couple of sh reps shy of failure. It just seems kind of ludicrous at this point. Uh, so that brings me to the program itself. Now, I encountered his material before I bought the program, obviously. And um, as someone with the amount of experience that I have, I was able to take what he was talking about and basically just translate it into my own program that I designed for myself. And you know, start seeing the benefits, start feeling how different it felt. Uh, and so, when I bought the program, it, the actual Golden Era Sister program, I won't say that it changed a whole lot about how I was training, right? Um, because I basically was able to figure it out myself, because he provided so much, um, you know, videos about how to do it, uh, you know, explanations. Um, so. The, the system itself didn't add a whole lot of value for me, though, you know, there were some exercises where he'd make a, a helpful comment about range of motion or per performance of the exercise, right? Things like that. Uh, however, if you were a novice or someone who's just coming into this and just learning how to do this kind of stuff, you don't really know how to program for yourself. It, there might be a lot more value there for you. Uh, and so he talks about things like nutrition, what you should be eating, how much you should be eating, things like that, explains the principles. Uh, in, in, I don't think in a way that you couldn't get from just watching his free content. But then there's also a bit about how to program the, um, the actual exercises, like how to fit them together into workouts and things like that. Now, I think for the novice, the novice, the program could include a bit more uh, detailed layout for like, this is what you should do on this day, or this is the kind of, this is a, what a, basically there's, there's enough there that you can figure it out for yourself if you put in a little bit of time. Uh, but it's not going to handhold you the way that you might want if you if you just want to have the least cognitive demand on yourself to figure out the system and, and what you should be doing. Uh, still, I think there might be a lot there for for the novice. And then when it came to the home home workout, uh, I think I, I got a couple more things from that than I did from the Golden Era system. Just some new takes, some on how to do uh, the exercises that I was or pretty much already familiar with. Now, inside the course, uh, there's a comment section for each video, and I've never seen a response from anybody who's associated with the program, uh, let alone from Jay Vincent himself, to any of the comments. People post comments about, like, how should I do this, or is this right, or that kind of stuff, and there's never any responses. And so that's a, that's a little bit, that's not a great sign, right? Um, it doesn't mean that the program itself is invaluable. It just means, I suppose, that it's not worth somebody's time to actually respond to those comments. Uh, however, it might have been better to just not have the comment section. I don't know if that's an, an option in Kajabi. Maybe it's not an option and the plan from the start was just, well, we can't remove the comment section, so we'll just ignore it. But there's also like the instructor bio isn't even filled out. It still says like Lorso Ipdom, which is like the garbly nonsense that a website builder uses to show you where text is supposed to go that hasn't been changed, right? It doesn't have a bio of, for Jay Vincent. It doesn't have a picture of him. It's just the, the generic stuff. So 
those might cause you to doubt the program a bit. Um, however, you know, again, if the value of the content is there, uh, you can overlook those things, I think. Uh, also, I'll say that uh, I bought the Golden Air system right at the beginning when it was offered. And then I saw, oh, there's a home, home workout system. Oh, there's, like, how, how could I purchase that? I couldn't figure out how to purchase it. And then one day it just showed up in my inbox. Uh, Jay was like, hey, if you bought the Golden Era system, here's a free upgrade. Here's the home, home system. Uh, so that was pretty cool. I can't fault, fault somebody who, you know, basically gives away their products like that. And uh, all of the, the people who detract from what he's doing by saying that he's a salesman. I mean, it, sometimes in sales, it makes a lot of sense to give things away for free. But in this case, right, like I was looking to buy it and I still got it for free. And I mean, it was pretty cool. So let's talk about the results. Uh, when I first started the, started training in this way, I was in a I was at maintenance calories. I didn't bump my calories. I didn't reduce them at all. However, I, I was somehow able to... <laughs> Somehow it resulted in me recompositioning a bit. So I gained a little bit of muscle. I lost a little fat, a little bit of fat to the extent that in the same, in the span of a more single week, my wife was like, uh, you know, did you get bigger in your arms and chest? And then a few days later, she was like, did you lose fat around your stomach? And it's pretty remarkable that, that those two comments would happen in the same week. Um, my weight didn't, my weight went up by two kilos, but, but my, uh, you know, I, I, my waist didn't change. So that's a great, another great indication that I, that I re recompositioned. And the fact that I could recomposition using this training method without, you know, like given the training history that I have, uh, is pretty remarkable because they tend, people tend to say, and it tends to be the case that recompositioning is only possible when you're detrained, as in you've trained for a while, then you stopped and you're coming back to it or when you haven't trained it at all, right? Uh, you have a very short training history. But in my case, neither one of those was true, and yet I was able to recomposition. Uh, then, uh, this is perhaps even bigger, my injuries went away. <laughs> like, I had a messed up hip from squatting a lot, my lower back was screwed up from deadlifting in a dumb way, and uh, neither one of them is perfect right now, but both of them are so much better than they used to be. And I can't account that. I can't attribute that to anything other than two things. One being the slow, smooth rep cadence without the peak forces, without the bouncing, without the excess momentum, right? Everything is very controlled with good form. Uh, so that is one. And then the other one is just, I'm doing less reps and getting more out of them. I'm doing less weight and getting more out of it, right? So whereas I used to have, you know, I used to be squatting like five sets of wh whatever number it is with 120 kilos, 130 kilos or something like that on my back, right? Now I'm, now I'm squatting s so much less, right? Like not exactly half, but maybe 70% of that, something like that for one set and still maintaining and in some cases depending on how much I'm eating building building muscle with it and so you just have to imagine that that's so much less wear and tear on the joints okay so injuries is a huge one uh, you know if you're still young this might you not might not be something you're worried about I wasn't worried about it when I was young but just free and please listen please listen to an old busy dad okay I'm 40 years old now I don't have time to be injured I need my training to support my health, my well-being, not to undermine it, okay? Exercise is exists, the purpose of it is to make you more capable. And if it's injuring you, you are not becoming more capable. That is like anti-exercise, even if it feels like you're doing something, you know, that's making you feel stronger. If you can't pick up the groceries or something like that or play with your kids, all right, it's anti-effective. Uh, okay. On the same level with the injury recovery is the time gain. Oh my gosh. Having so much less time re required to work out is has been a, a, a massive boon for me. It's allowed me to basically like take care of two small kids, do all the shopping, 80% of the cooking for the house, most of the, the, the house stuff that needs to be done in addition to a full-time job as a, you know, t uh, the, you know, working as a professor at a university, uh, pursuing other programs, trying to build a business, my own coaching business on the side, 
right? Where I, you know, I try to help dads become super. Uh, all, all of this stuff, I don't think it would be possible if I was still training five to six hours a week. And as I said before, it, or maybe I didn't. It seems at this point, when I look back at the way I used to train and the way that most people train, it seems like the, it, it either must be attributed to just a lack of information. If people do know about this kind of training and they don't use it, it's like they just like being in the gym. They're just hobbyists. It's just a fascination. It, it's like LARPing, you know, like live action role playing where they just want to go to the gym and be seen there and be seen in their gym gear and talk to other people at the gym. And they just like being in that space. And I understand that. But what is it really worth to you? Right. And then the other one is like, it could, they could just be freaking narcissistic, right? Oh, they just like looking at themselves in the mirror. They like, you know, and um, none of those are good enough reasons. You know, gym gains are great. They're good. I, I love them, right? I uh, pursued them for a long time. I spent, I invested a lot of time in them. They're wonderful. Life gains are more important. And if your gym gains, it, don't confuse making progress in the gym with making progress in life. I have made this mistake, okay? And it's it's almost like, it's almost on the same level as ma confusing making progress in a video game with making progress in life. You feel like, oh, I really, I'm awesome. Uh, Cause I, you know, dude, adding like 10 pounds to your deadlift will not appreciably improve your life in like any measurable way, unless you are, you know, a world-class uh, power lifter and the 10 pounds means the difference between first and second place, right? Yet, like if you're, you know, if you're just beginning, sure, you want to add weight to your deadlift. It's good to be stronger. Yeah. But when you get to, to the point where you're like lifting, you know, 1.5 times your body weight, two times your body weight, something like that on the deadlift, like the amount of effort and time and, and all that kind of stuff that it's going to take to add that extra 10, 10 pounds to your deadlift, put it somewhere else. You will, you, you, you know, you'll find better balance. You will be more successful. You will feel better about your life. You'll have better relationships, you know, with your kids, with your partner. Um, so basically, I'm not going back to train any other way. I just can't imagine a scenario where it would, it would really make sense to, to go back to it. Uh, so basically, let me summarize here. It's a long video. Uh, first, I think the principles are absolutely good. Uh, if you haven't tried them, if you're a doubter, you know, if you, if you feel like some sort of cognitive dissonance because it's, you know, you get this sense of like, yeah, but if, if I've been training this way for this long, right, and it, and it turns out I didn't need to be, well, then that would mean all that time was wasted. That would mean all these things that I identify with would be, you know, incorrect or something like that. I understand, but it's not worth throwing more good money after bad money. That's called a sunk cost, sunk cost fallacy. Well, I did this for this long, so... I've got to keep doing it because otherwise it will be uncomfortable for me emotionally. Give it a try. Give it a try. Okay. And if you, and if you think a uh, one set to failure, there's no way that could be enough volume. Hey, here's the trick. This is something that for some reason, no people talk about. It's not one set per muscle group necessarily, though it could be if that's enough for you. But if you struggle to get enough stimulus for smaller muscle groups, like your shoulders, for example, by just doing one set to failure. Okay, do one set to failure of shoulder press, for example, and then do one set to failure of lat raise, and then do one set to failure of uh, reverse fly, right? You know, you don't necessarily need to do one set per muscle group, though you can if that's enough, again. But if you're like, oh, there's no way one set could be enough volume, okay, Add a diversity of exercise to it and do one set of each. There you go. Problem solved. There's no person for whom that wouldn't be enough, enough volume. And, uh, you know, it just, it, it kind of drives me. <laughs> so uh, that's all I'll say about that before I get off, off um, track too far.
So that's my summary of the principles, the program. For an experienced person, you can probably take the principles and just apply them and, and get, and hopefully you'll get great results the way that I, that I did. Uh, for the novice, I think the program might be um, more of a worthwhile investment. And so, yeah, that's it. That's all I got to say. I hope that uh, I hope that this is helpful as a review, and uh, I'm, I'll try to do more of these in the future. If this was helpful, please like and subscribe. Thank you so much for watching to the end. You know, it's tough to be a a busy busy dad without the expendable cash to like hire a team of people to produce my videos. All I got is my experience and my knowledge and my willingness and desire to share it with people whom it might help. So really, thank you so much.